Welcome to day two of 3.6. We're going to continue working with compound inequalities. Today we're specifically going to focus on OR inequalities. So let's take a look. We have a couple uh, blanks to fill in and then we will try example four. So it says a solution of a compound inequality involving OR is any number that makes either inequality true. And the way that we're going to solve an OR inequality is we're going to solve the two inequalities separately. Yesterday, when we were solving the AND inequalities, we separated them and then we put them back together. And we also learned how you can just do it together the whole time. But today, they're always going to be separated. OR inequalities will not be combined. So let's take a look at example four below. We have 3t plus 2 is less than negative 7 or negative 4t plus 5 is less than 1. So let's focus on the left inequality. We're going to get the t by itself, so minus 2, so we have 3t is less than negative 9, divide both sides by 3, t equals, actually sorry, not equals, um, t is less than negative 3. Bring down the or, and now we're going to do um, opposite operations for the next inequality, minus 5, negative 4t is less than negative 4. We're going to divide both sides by negative 4. And remember, when we multiply or divide by a negative, we have to flip the symbol. So that means we have t is greater than 1. So I'll just bring this down to the next line. Okay, there's our answer. Now we just need to graph it on the number line below. So let's go to the negative 3, open circle. Looks like they're both open circles on the 1 as well. And remember the trick I showed you a couple lessons ago, this symbol, the less than, points towards the left. And then the greater than symbol points towards the right. Now we're going to learn what an interval is. It is a portion of the number line. x is less than or equal to negative 3. This is an interval because the only numbers that are included are numbers that are equal to negative 3 or less than, aka smaller. So that's an interval. Now we're going to learn how to use interval notation. It describes an interval on the number line. It's just like a format. And for using interval notation, we're going to learn how to use parentheses, brackets, and infinity. So first, parentheses. We have used parentheses before, they are right here, so you want to write down the, what the symbols look like next to the word symbol on your note sheet. And the intervals and points are not included when you use parentheses. That is important. Remember, parentheses, end points not included. Now, if you want to include the end points, then you're going to use brackets. And brackets are kind of like parentheses, except they're kind of like boxy. Um, and take a look at the difference between parentheses and brackets. Parentheses happen when the intervals are the intervals endpoints are not included. Brackets happen when the interval endpoints are included. And you use parentheses when you have these symbols and you use brackets when you have these symbols. So when you have a line underneath, you're including the endpoint and you use brackets. When you do not have the line underneath the less than or the greater than, then you use parentheses. And then also infinity there's a positive infinity and there's a negative infinity. And you use the positive infinity when the interval continues forever in the positive direction, aka 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, going on forever. And you use the negative infinity when it goes forever in the negative direction. So an example of this would be, let's see if I can underline it, um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, dot, 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 going on forever. That would be negative infinity. So here's a little summary box for you. Um, use brackets for closed dots. So just draw a closed dot next to this. And you use brackets when you're including the endpoints so the symbols have the line underneath. And you use parentheses for open dots, so there's an open dot. And you use parentheses when there is no line underneath the inequality symbol. And then below is just a summary of an inequality, a graph, and interval notation. So let's flip to the back and let's do our last example. What is the graph of bracket negative 4, comma 6, parentheses? Okay, so 
bracket means we're including. So we're going to have a closed circle there. And parenthesis means open. We're not including. So endpoint included, endpoint not included. So go to the negative 4. Actually, you have to write these in. Uh, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and 6. Open circle on the 6. Close circle on the negative 4. And shade in between. If you don't see the word or, if it's just one interval combined, it's going to be the overlap. Remember we learned this yesterday. It's the and inequality. So that is the graph, and now it's asking us how do you write that interval as an inequality? Well, the x is in the middle. When you have a closed dot, it's going to be the line underneath, and when you have an open dot, it's going to not have a line. So we have these symbols, and then the numbers are, are the endpoints, and that's it. This is the interval. Negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6. Now let's go to part B. What is the graph of x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than 2? Okay, so let's look at this symbol right here. That has a line underneath, so that means we're going to have a closed circle on the negative 1. And then we're going to have an open circle on the positive 2, because there's no line underneath that greater than symbol. Open. Sorry about the circles. They're really struggling at the bottom of the page. And now the symbols are pointing towards where you're, you're drawing the arrow. And my computer's not letting me draw a nice line, so there you go. There's the graph. And then how do you write it in interval notation? Well. This line underneath they means we're going to have a closed, and that means included, endpoint included. And then the greater than symbol is the open circle that we drew already, and the endpoint is not included. And for included, we're going to use a bracket, and for not included, we're going to use parentheses. And taking a look at the graph below, they're continu continuing towards positive and negative infinity. So this is how we're going to write it. And by the way, whenever you use positive or negative infinity, it's not contained to one point. So we're going to use parentheses. That's the idea to remember. Whenever you use infinity, use parentheses. And then it stops at the negative one, so bracket, including, and then you write the word or. And it starts at the 2, parentheses, because it's not including, and then it goes towards positive infinity, and parentheses. So that is how you write that interval in interval notation. That completes this lesson. You can try the lesson check now for day 2, or you can wait until we do problems together during class.